Hey, welcome back, everybody. In this video, I want to uh, share with you the Monty Hall problem, which was um, a very famous problem. So there was once this TV show where you were given three doors, they were all closed. And uh, you knew that behind one door, you had a car, which you wanted to have. And behind the other two doors, there were goats, which you didn't want to have. And normally what happened is that you would select one door, for example, this one, um, and then the um the host who knew which uh, which which of the other doors had uh, a goat or a car would open one of the remaining doors that had a goat right so let's say like open this door you kind of see a goat here not very nicely drawn but but but, but imagine if there's a goat there right and then you are given the choice of whether you want to switch or not switch and if you think about that for a moment you can kind of pause the video for a second and think would you rather switch or would you rather not switch and it's surprisingly to uh, quite a few people that it turns out that you always want to switch. So I want to give you a bit of an analysis as to why you always want to switch. So let's say we have two strategies. So strategy one is stick to the same doors. So don't switch. Then what's the probability of, uh, what's the probability of winning? Well, you have one third chance. If you randomly pick those doors, then the probability is a third. So let's look at the second strategy, which is always switch. And in this case, it's really helpful to actually draw a tree. So what will happen here is that with a third probability, you would have selected a car in the first, in the first uh, draw. Select a car in the first draw, and that happens with a third probability. And when that happens, you don't win anything. Okay, um, so the switching will always give you a no win. Right? So with a third probability, that strategy is not gonna make you win. But then with two thirds probability, you would have selected a goat, which means with two thirds probability, every time you switch, the only remaining door will be the car. So here you will win with certainty, win, with certainty. Right? Um, so, so here I should probably put this here just to illustrate that this is the, the, the case where on your first selection you selected a car and here you selected a goat. Right? Um, and then when you switch you win with certainty but that happens two-thirds of the time so your probability of winning here is going to become two-thirds. So all of a sudden by switching you doubled your odds of uh, your odds of winning, and I realize that students are still a bit uncomfortable with this. Even when they see this little tree, they're like, ah, "I'm not not really sure what's happening here." The, the intuition is that the host is giving you some valuable information by opening the door. The door opening is not really random, right? And um, so that's that's really the that's really the 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 main thing that you have over there. Now, to really understand this, you might want to generalize this. So let's say, for example, that we have n doors where n is greater or equal to three. So in the special case, we're going to get this. And let's imagine that this uh, Monty, which was the, the host of this very famous show, um, opens m uh, goat doors. And let's uh, retain the, 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 the idea that there's only one car behind. And, and by the way, it's very interesting. Someone actually wrote a, a paper on this. They said that it's always in your, in your advantage to switch the doors. And all the participants figured this out and everyone was switching. And eventually they had to, they had to uh, stop that, that show, right? They had to stop that, that, that idea because it didn't really make sense anymore. Uh, once people figured out that they could double their probability of winning by, by switching. Um, okay, so now let's, let's think of this generalized problem where you have N doors, M goats that are opening. Well, let's again look at the two strategies. So strategy one is you stick with your original one, right? So what's the probability of you winning? Well, there's n doors. So the probability of winning is one over n, right? And with probability n minus one out of n, you're, you're not gonna win, okay? So that's, that's really what's happening here. Now let's look at switching. Switching, always switching. Now, of course, with probability, with probability, one over n 
you would have selected a car in the first place, right? And by switching, you're always going to win. Always, always going to lose. Always lose. But now, imagine that you're always switching. Now, remember, Monty as open um, with, well, let's assume that you had picked a goat, not a car, right? So this is a car. This is goat, right? Uh, Monty opens M doors, right? Um, so now you have N minus the first door that you open minus the M goat doors that Monty opened divided by, uh, divided by, um, well, uh, well, you do this in, 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 in multiple ways, um, but what this would be, uh, would be the N minus one divided by uh, N, right? So now there is only um, N minus one minus M doors remaining, right? Um, that you know are, um, well, oh no, I made a mistake here. So these are the doors that are remaining and the probability that you get, the probability you get a car is just one minus this, right? So there's only one car. This is the number of doors left. So the probability you're gonna get the winning car or the probability you're gonna win is this. So we're gonna call this winning probability. And now we still haven't figured out the overall you know, chances that you're gonna win here. But we know that with one nth probability, you're always going to lose. So probability of winning is going to be zero. So probability of winning is going to be with one nth probability. When you pick the car, you're going to get zero because when you switch, you are certain you're not going to switch into uh, you're not going to switch into a car because you had a car in the first place. When you got a goat in the first place, which happens with a very large probability, n minus one over n. Right, um, you know that you're going to win with probability one over n minus one minus m. So you can we can conclude that the you know probability now of winning is simply going to be n minus one over n n minus m minus one. Okay. Now. It's very useful to do it this way because intuitively you can actually see what happens as the number of the number of you know n becomes uh, becomes uh, or the number of m's becomes relatively large, right? So imagine for a second if m is equal to n minus one, right? Um, uh, actually, n minus two. Let's do it this way. N minus two. Then in that particular in that particular situation, the probability of winning would be quite large, because Monty is really giving you a lot of information there. So you'd have n minus one over n n minus n plus two minus one. So this would be n minus one over n. Right? So all of a sudden you're completely flipping that that idea. So imagine a situation where Monty, you have like a thousand doors there, right? And you pick one at random. And then Monty opens, you know, 998 doors. So there's only one other door left and says, would you want to switch? Well, if you switched, you would pretty much have a certain probability. You'll have 999 times out of a thousand times, you'll be certain you're going to win. Why, why is that happening? Because it was very unlikely in the first place that you'd pick the car. Right? Um, so that information is, is quite useful. This is kind of an application of uh, Bayes' updated probability, and I hope you will find that useful. Up until next time. Thank you.